In this lesson, we are going to study inverse cosine. Let us recall the graph of y equals cosine x. It passes through the point 0, 1, and it has x-intercepts at these points, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. Just like the graph of y equals sine x, this function does not have an inverse because it is not 1 to 1. If you draw a horizontal line, it will intersect the graph at more than one point. Just like what we did with y equals sine x, we will restrict our domain so that the resulting graph will be one to one. Again, we want the resulting graph to have the same range as that of the original graph. What is the range of y equals cosine x? The range is negative one to one. If we restrict the domain from zero to pi, we will get this green graph. Hence, the domain of this is 0 to pi. And the range, we're good, it's negative 1 to 1. So since this one is already 1 to 1, we can now get its inverse. First, let us get the line y equals x. And we will reflect this graph along the line y equals x. Let us consider the endpoints of this graph. This point here is pi negative 1. And this point here is 0, 1. When we reflect the point pi negative 1 with respect to the line y equals x, this two will get interchanged, so we will get the point negative 1 pi. Negative 1 pi is here. And of course, we have the point 0, 1. It will go to the point 1, 0, this one. We are now ready to reflect Let's start with this part here. When we reflect this along this line, we will get this one. We started at this point and we will end up at 1, 0 because this one ended at 0, 1. And for this part over here, we will end up at negative 1 pi. So it's something like that. And therefore, this is the graph of y equals cosine inverse x. Our f inverse is now y equals cosine inverse x, and hence the domain and range will just be interchanged. The domain is going to be negative 1, 1, and the range is 0 to pi. So if you look at this one, the range is 0 to pi. This is pi, and of course, the domain is from negative 1 to 1. Here is a definition of the inverse cosine function. We have y equals cosine inverse x if and only if x is equal to cosine of y, where this expression here is between negative 1 to 1, and the answer to cosine inverse x, that's our y, it's always going to be 0 to pi. Again, why is it that x is between negative 1 to 1? x here belongs in the domain. The domain of your inverse cosine is negative 1, 1. And the answer, the y values are just the elements in your range. And the range is 0 to pi. Again, what does cosine inverse of a number give us? Cosine inverse of a number between negative 1 to 1 will give us an angle, that's our y, will give us an angle which is between 0 to pi such that the cosine of that angle is equal to this number here. Since they are inverses of each other, we have these properties. Cosine of cosine inverse x is equal to x and cosine inverse of cosine x is equal to x. You should look at the outermost function to determine what should be the value here. For example, the outermost function here is cosine. And what is the answer to cosine of something? What is the range? The answer is negative 1 to 1. If the outermost function is cosine inverse, cosine inverse will give you an angle. And that angle has to be between 0 to pi. You have to memorize this by heart. Let us now find the exact values of the following. Let's evaluate cosine inverse of square root of 3 over 2. 
Remember that for cosine inverse, we are looking for angle. So that's why I'm letting all of this to be equal to theta. And this theta, since all of them are cosine inverse, this theta has to be between 0 to pi. So it's either we are in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. For the first item, this means that we are looking for an angle such that its cosine is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Always remove the inverse. So you can just sort off, put it on the other side, but it will now be cosine. Why can we do that? We are just getting the cosine of both sides. Since we are looking for the cosine, we are always on the x-axis. So this is square root of 3 over 2. And what is that angle? So this is a short angle. Your only options are pi over 6 and pi over 3. But since the x-coordinate is longer, this one here is pi over 6. For the second one, cosine inverse of negative square root of 3 over 2. Again, we are looking for an angle whose cosine is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine refers to the x-coordinate, so this time around we are here. So this is our angle. What is the reference angle? It's also a small angle. Your only options are pi over 6 and pi over 3. This has to be pi over 6. So therefore, what is this angle here? This is pi minus pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. Next, cosine inverse of negative 1 half. This means that we are looking for an angle such that negative 1 half is equal to cosine of theta. Negative 1 half is here. And we have a tall angle, tall reference angle. This has to be pi over 3. What is the name of this angle? It's pi minus pi over 3, so that's 2 pi over 3. Lastly, we want cosine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 2. This means that negative square root of 2 over 2 is cosine of theta. Again, you can just sort of put this cosine inverse on the other side and it will now become cosine. Negative square root of 2 over 2, this is for which reference angle? That is for pi over 4. So let's just say that this is negative square root of 2 over 2. And this is your reference angle pi over 4. So therefore, our theta is pi minus pi over 4. That is 3 pi over 4. Next, let us evaluate cosine of cosine inverse 0 0.25. Just like what we did with sine inverse, can we cancel this? Is this the same as 0 0.25? What property should we use? We have to make use of cosine of cosine inverse x. This is equal to x. What should be the condition? If x is an element of which interval? The outermost function is cosine. So you have to be in the range of cosine, which is negative 1 to 1. And of course, 0 0.25 is an element of negative 1 to 1. So therefore, correct. This is really equal to 0 0.25. For the second one, we have cosine inverse of cosine of pi over 12. What property should we use for the second one? The outermost function is cosine inverse. We can cancel this. If this quantity here is an element of what interval, it should belong in the range of cosine inverse. What answer will you get when you obtain cosine inverse of something? It's an angle, and that angle has to be between 0 to pi. Is pi over 12 an element of 0 to pi? Yes, so this is just pi over 12. We can cancel. Next, 
Let us find the exact value of cosine inverse of cosine 13 pi over 12. Is this the same as 13 pi over 12? Can we just cancel? You should have memorized by now that the outermost function is cosine inverse. So therefore, this value here should be an element of which interval? You should belong in the interval 0 to pi. But this is not true, correct? 13 pi over 12 already exceeds pi. So therefore, no. How do we evaluate this? If they are not equal, again, whenever you see inverse trigonometric function, you know that it's just an angle. So you let that always to be equal to theta and get rid of the inverse function. I'll put this on the other side. So we are left with cosine of 13 pi over 12 is equal to cosine theta. And then locate the angle that you obtain here. Where is 13 pi over 12? Take note from here, 13 pi over 12 exceeds pi by just pi over 12. So from pi, you go up by pi over 12. And what is the cosine of 13 pi over 12? It's this value, correct? This value here is cosine. That's the x-coordinate of this point. We want to get an angle between 0 to pi, which have the same x-coordinate as this point. What is that angle? They must have the same reference angle. This must be equal to pi over 12 as well. And therefore, what is the name of this angle? It's pi, but you go back by pi over 12. So therefore, that's... 11 pi over 12. Pi minus pi over 12. Next, we want to evaluate cosine inverse of cosine of 5. Is this equal to 5? Can we cancel? Our outermost function is cosine inverse. Hence, the answer should be an element of 0 to pi. Pi is equal to 3.14. So definitely, 5 is already outside this interval. So the answer is no, they are not the same. So just like with the first example that we had, we will get rid of the cosine inverse by letting this to be equal to theta, get cosine of both sides. So we're left with cosine of 5 equals cosine of theta. In which quadrant does 5 lie? Pi is approximately 3.14. 3 pi over 2 is approximately 4.71. And of course, 2 pi is approximately 6.28. So therefore, 5 lies on the fourth quadrant. So probably somewhere here. And what is our reference angle? It's 6.28 minus 5, so that's 1.28. This is the point corresponding to the angle 5, and we are looking at its cosine. So therefore, we're looking at its x-coordinate. Its x-coordinate is this one. We are looking for an angle theta which lies on the interval 0 to pi. And what is that angle? We just flip it along the x-axis so that they both have the same x-coordinate. Therefore, they must have the same reference angle of 1.28. So therefore, our theta is equal to 1.28. Next, let us find the exact value of cosine inverse of sine pi over 7. We have a cosine inverse here. So therefore, this whole thing will just give us an angle theta. But of course, your theta has to be an element of 0 pi. Let's get rid of the cosine inverse by getting cosine of both sides. So this means that sine pi over 7 is equal to cosine of theta. We have two trigonometric functions. However, they are 
cofunctions. We want to end up with the same trigonometric function, so therefore we make use of our complementary identity. When you want to turn sine to cosine, we make use of the identity sine alpha is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha. To turn sine into cosine, you just get the complementary angle of this angle. So the left-hand side becomes cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 7, and this is equal to cosine of theta. We get 7 pi minus 2 pi is 5 pi over 14. The question now is, is theta equal to 5 pi over 14? Remember, what is that theta that we are looking for? We want it to be 0 to pi. But 5 pi over 14 lies in this interval, 0 to pi. So therefore, our theta is equal to 5 pi over 14. Another example, we want to evaluate cosine inverse of sine of 6 pi over 5. So just like the previous example, we have cosine inverse of something. So this whole thing is just an angle. But since this is cosine inverse, that angle has to be between 0 to pi. Let's get rid of cosine inverse by getting cosine of both sides. We get sine of 6 pi over 5 is equal to cosine of theta. We make use of our complementary angle identity to turn this sine into cosine. This becomes cosine of pi over 2 minus 6 pi over 5 is equal to cosine of theta. This is cosine of 5 pi minus 12 pi is negative 7 pi over 12. This is equal to cosine theta. Take note, is theta equal to negative 7 pi over 12? No. Theta cannot be equal to negative 7 pi over 12 because negative 7 pi over 12 is not an element of 0 to pi. How do we now proceed? We will just locate this angle negative 7 pi over 12. It's negative so we go clockwise. Negative pi is negative 12 pi over 12. Negative pi over 2 is negative 6 pi over 12. So therefore negative 7 pi over 12 is somewhere here. And what is now the reference angle? Don't mind the sign here because that's just referring to the direction. So it's 12 pi minus 7 pi over 12. So the reference angle is 5 pi over 12. We want the angle theta to be between, again, 0 to Pi. We want them to have the same cosine, so we want them to have the same x-coordinate, which is this one. Let us now reflect it along the x-axis. So this reference angle should also be equal to 5 pi over 12. What is now the name of that angle? It's pi minus 5 pi over 12. So therefore, that is... 7 pi over 12. A shorter solution for this one is to make use of the fact that cosine is an even function. Since cosine is an even function, cosine of negative 7 pi over 12 is just equal to cosine of 7 pi over 12. We can get rid of the negative here. So therefore, we have Cosine of 7 pi over 12 is equal to cosine theta 
And since 7 pi over 12 already lies in this interval, therefore theta is equal to 7 pi over 12.